By now, I should have had Lyme disease over and over again. I get roughly about 20 ticks per week. I'll be in the shower and I'm like scratching in my head. I'm like, what the heck is this? And then I'll pull out a tick in the back of my scalp. I'll have them hiding in different places. I'll be looking in the mirror and thinking that it's a mole, but actually it's a tick. It's really weird. And the problem I have with the treatment is I don't like antibiotics. And I'm not telling you not to take an antibiotic or the conventional treatment or to take it. I just want to give you another viewpoint. Antibiotics don't just kill the bad bacteria. They also kill the good bacteria. So they lower your immune system. And there's a percentage of people that develop resistance to antibiotics. So now they have things like chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia. They developed an autoimmune disease after their treatment of Lyme. So what I'm going to reveal today is what I think is the reason I'm not getting this Lyme disease. A couple points about ticks. Number one, there is over 900 different species of ticks. A certain percentage can create uh, Lyme, which is a kind of a corkscrew bacteria. They can penetrate into tissues that no other bacteria can get into. And this is one way they evade your immune system by going into certain tissues that don't have any immune cells. But there's other types of spirochyte infections that create other diseases like syphilis and something called Rocky Mountain spotted fever, which is a bit rare. And so you have this concept of not all ticks will carry this bacteria. And also this other point, not all of these corkscrew bacteria can create disease. And understanding that is very, very important in preventing these diseases. So here's what happens. The tick attaches itself in your body and the tick's saliva has this numbing agent. So it's really hard to know that it's on your body. This is why it is so important to check your body, front and back, sideways, your hair, every single day. And on a positive note, it takes a bit of time between 36 and 48 hours, which is a really good thing because you have a little time to check your body and make sure that there's no ticks that are creating this effect, or else it would be very bad if they can create an instant infection. First, you might have a little um, immune reaction, a little redness, but then it can develop into something called a bullseye rash. That doesn't mean 100% of the time you have Lyme disease, but it's a good indicator that you might have it. And I had a bullseye rash two times in my life, and I will explain exactly what I did for both, but I think it's really important to understand more about this corkscrew bacteria. And also these corkscrew bacteria can also invade the heart, creating uh, palpitations, arrhythmias, things like that. Another way that this spirochyte evades or avoids your immune system or immune system detection is by putting up certain defense mechanisms to keep them alive once your immune cells have actually engulfed them and are eating them by what's called a monocyte which is, is a self that eats bacteria and viruses and fungus. They have an incredible ability to adapt to different environments. But the problem with these little bacteria is they create this immune reaction. And there's a lot of collateral damage that occurs from your immune system trying to kill them. And this is why you have a lot of inflammatory conditions when you have this condition called Lyme. When I initially got Lyme's disease long ago, I had severe inflammation in the back of my head. I had a severe headache. My whole body was like aching, like I had the flu, and I was extremely tired. But that's the only time I ever reacted to a tick bite. And from that point on, I never had those reactions. And I'm going to tell you why I think I haven't. Apparently, that specific bacteria has the capacity to affect your receptors for vitamin D. Because vitamin D is the most important vitamin of the entire immune system, including the monocytes. Vitamin D helps the monocyte become very strong and efficient. Vitamin D also increases these antimicrobial, they're called peptides or compounds, that help kill spirochytes. This microbe now is going to be in the driver's seat. It's going to be in control. And your immune cells are going to be in the back seat. Like even the Epstein-Barr virus or the cytomegalovirus has the ability to downgrade the vitamin D receptor because somehow it knows how important this vitamin D is, especially with enhancing 
your immune system's ability to fight. But there's another detail about this that I just thought was very interesting I want to share with you. The monocyte, when it comes in contact with this spirochyte, triggers this other chemical called interferon. Now, what is interferon? Interferon uh, is a compound that interferes with viruses. When a monocyte comes in contact with this bacteria, interferon goes up. So it must have some other functions that we don't know about. Now, the other thing I was going to mention about this is something called the post-treatment Lyme disease. This is very common. You see people that had Lyme, they had the treatment, but now they still have symptoms. They develop autoimmune diseases because the immune system is greatly suppressed because they can no longer absorb vitamin D. And this is where it gets really interesting because I take a tremendous amount of vitamin D on a regular basis. I think it's the vitamin D that keeps my immune system strengthened. It literally bulletproofs me against problems like Lyme. And this next part I want to share with you, it's so important, but it's not really well known by even doctors. There's two different main systems of vitamin D. You have one system that controls all the calcium, okay? And then another system of vitamin D that is non-calcium benefits, like the supporting of the immune cells, like the support of your uh, central nervous system, all your nerves, and then the heart, and the muscles, and the intestines, and the anti-inflammatory effect. That's all over here. This is a completely different system. This system that controls calcium and bone, that vitamin D is received from the blood. This system over here, like your immune system, is unable to get very much of this vitamin D from the blood. But this vitamin D is very locked up, mostly unavailable to this system right here, especially your immune cells. The immune system depends on its vitamin D from the sun, from your food, which is impossible because we don't get much vitamin D from our food, or supplements. Now, most of the research on vitamin D on skeletal system found that you only need a very small amount, like 600 IUs of vitamin D to maintain this calcium support for your skeletal system. But this system over here needs a lot more, like 10,000 IUs. Now, what's even more wild is that this type of vitamin D in the blood can last for three weeks. This vitamin D that comes from sun, food, or supplements only lasts 24 hours. In other words, if you're taking your vitamin D once a week and not every day, you're not going to be able to feed the immune cells. And on top of that, that spirochyte has the ability to downgrade the vitamin D receptor by 50 X. If I personally suspected that I had Lyme, I would be taking 30, 40, 50,000 IUs of vitamin D without any question at all. That's probably why I did not develop Lyme because really the strategy is going to be supporting your immune system versus trying to kill off this infection because you end up killing off the immune system, the very thing that keeps you strong and keeps you protected. One additional thing I want to mention is that they have found these spirochytes in your tissue underneath your teeth. That's right. So if you have an abscess, an infection underneath the tooth, um, there's a possibility that you could have this spirochyte as well. And the reason I'm bringing that up is there's so many problems connected with teeth infections, especially after root canals, because this bacteria is hidden, it's protected underneath uh, into the jaw, and it can leak out and create all sorts of problems with your heart, all sorts of problems with the immune system. It can keep you inflamed. And this is why I always recommend like a biological dentist or a holistic dentist to really make sure you don't have these hidden infections underneath your teeth, which can create a lot of problems. This is the protocol that I think would be a good idea. Whether you're going to do an antibiotic or not, I would recommend taking high doses of vitamin D3, at least 30,000 I use. Anytime you take vitamin D3, you also need magnesium and you need K2 and you need zinc. Those are all cofactors to allow vitamin D to work. And if you're taking high doses of vitamin D without those, you can actually even create a deficiency of the cofactors. Two other things I think would be really good to take, Japanese knockweed for supporting your immune system, and then a lot of garlic. Now, if you wanted to learn more about a, a protocol that I use when I had Lyme, check out this video right here.